Greetings from Western Washington State. Hydroponic lettuce and pak choy have been planted in food safe plastic buckets filled with nutrient solution and are growing well. The buckets were placed in this small greenhouse which has the following features. A raised wooden floor to protect against soil pathogens and weeds. Chicken wire to keep out squirrels, rabbits, and birds. An insect screen to exclude moths and other insects. And a polycarbonate roof panel to protect from rainfall. We've got all our potential hazards covered. What could possibly go wrong? Surprise, surprise! After a few weeks, one of the lettuce plants was dead and another was badly injured. And even the healthy lettuce plant has some foliage damage. There seems to be some sort of unwelcome visitor here. Looking more closely, we can see that it's a slug, a slimy slug. Let's gently remove it with a trowel. I feel like a surgeon. Since this is hydroponic culture, we can also look under the lid to see if there are any slugs hiding out there. Whoops, the plant fell out of the cover, but it'll survive. What do we see here? Yes, it's a slug hiding under the cover. Yeah, Mr. Slug, you can't hide from us hydroponic folks. Using my newly developed, somewhat clumsy surgical skills, I carefully removed the slug from the cover. Here's a close-up picture of the slug. This slug was hiding in one of the net pots and tumbled out when the net pot fell from the cover. The net pot can just be placed back in the cover and the plant will usually grow again. There will be some transplant shock and it will be more severe if the plant is older. After a week or two, this lettuce plant is growing just fine. The nearby pak choy also looked like it had some slug damage. After lifting the cover, I think I see a slug hiding in one of the net pots. Yes, there's definitely a slug hiding in the net pot. I'm going to try to coax the slug out with this hacksaw blade. Maybe it'll work better if I just push the slug upwards. With a little prodding, the slug crawled out of the top of the net pot and then I was able to use the trowel to remove him from the net pot. Here's another bucket with suspected slug damage on pak choy. There's the guilty party clinging to the bottom of the net pot. Here's another view of the slug. Actually, he was quite lucky. He fell down and I wasn't able to find him and he got away. To give you some appreciation of the acrobatic skill of these slugs, they traveled from the ground to the supports of the greenhouse, then through the sides of the greenhouse, and finally, up the sides of the buckets. This is a considerable distance over many uneven surfaces. Food is a great motivator. Here is another small greenhouse where slug damage is suspected on these arugula plants. The cover was removed and yes, there seems to be a slug under the cover. Here's a close-up picture of the slug. To give an idea of how fast a slug can move, the beveled area of this trowel is about 10 millimeters. The slug traveled approximately a 7 millimeter distance in only 5.5 seconds. That calculates to about 75 millimeters per minute, or about 3 inches per minute, which equals about 180 inches, or 15 feet per hour. This indicates that slugs can travel pretty far to find your crops. Slugs like to hide under things such as this chunk of tree bark. Turn the bark over and there's the slug. Here's a close-up. Here's a slug hiding under another chunk of bark and another. These pieces of bark can serve as slug traps. Just remember to harvest the slugs every day. Slugs also like to hide under blocks of wood. There were several slugs under these blocks when they were turned over. Also, I found slugs hiding 
under geotextile ground cover fabric. One deterrent to slugs that works at least sometimes is to place copper foil around the plants. As I understand it, the copper reacts with the slug slime to form an electrical charge, and this is uncomfortable for the slug, so they leave. So far, it's working for these soil-grown pumpkins and this hydroponic cucumber plant. There are numerous YouTubes on slug prevention and control, and I encourage you to learn a technique that will work for you. Slugs can carry parasites. The most serious parasite is a nematode, which causes eosinophilic meningitis from accidental ingestion of the parasite when eating fresh produce. This disease is known as rat lungworm disease. Ask your local health department about the health risks of slugs in your community, especially if there have been any documented cases of rat lungworm disease. A public health spokesman indicated there were no documented rat lungworm cases in Washington state. However, rat lungworm disease associated with slugs has been a significant problem on the Big Island of Hawaii. Here are a few tips for collecting slugs. Wear rubber gloves and use tongs or a tool. Don't let the slime get on your hands as it may contain some parasites and the slime is very difficult to wash off your hands. Although tempting, it's best not to smash the slugs as they may contain some parasite. Instead, make a slug jug, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Here is how to make a slug jug as suggested by a publication, Control Slugs and Snails, 2017 University of Hawaii Sea Grant Program. Find a sturdy one half gallon or larger plastic container with a handle and wide mouth. Add seven cups of water plus one cup of salt. Add bleach to keep it from smelling too bad. The University of Hawaii Cooperative Extension Service recommends the following food preparation protocol for fresh produce, which has been suspected of slug contamination. In the kitchen, Wash your hands with soap and water. Clean your kitchen surfaces, cutting boards, and utensils. Separate the leaves and sections. Look. Inspect for slugs and other debris. Rinse with clean portable water. Look again. Recheck what you may have missed. Rinse. Rinse again before preparing. And finally, cook. Rinse well and cook to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, now it's decision time. If I were in a known rat lungworm area and had this slug damage, I would be inclined to terminate the crop and refocus on preventing slugs in my next crop. In a location free of rat lungworm disease and other parasites, the lettuce should be okay to eat at maturity, but I would employ the University of Hawaii food preparation cleaning and rinsing protocol and might even prepare something like quick dip lettuce where individual leaves are dipped in boiling water for a short time. I would follow a similar line of reasoning for pak choy. Since we normally cook pak choy, that would be a much easier decision. I would appreciate hearing your comments and experiences on how to proceed after finding slugs in your crops. I have posted several links about the slug-related rat lungworm disease and also the University of Hawaii Sitar Farm Food Safety Good Agricultural Practices. Now. It's time to crawl on out of here.